we're gonna talk about this color right here, and it's named after a Japanese door. <laughs> How's that for a fun fact? Today's color code is SW7042. We got the code, now let's get to cracking. We're back in the world of Sherwin-Williams with a flexible warm beige color that was indeed requested by one of you. Let's go over some great color pairings for Shoji White, a trim color or two, and finally we'll discuss how and where you can best use this color in your home. And will I deem it as a main color? You're gonna have to find out. Shoji White is named after the charming, sliding, lattice screen doors that are mainly found in Japan. And while those are usually made up of a white paper screen, they're normally outlined with natural wood of all tones. And it's a combination of those two colors coming together that reflects what Shoji White ends up looking like, because it's definitely lighter than most wood I've seen, but it's not quite light enough to be deemed as a true white paint color. Immediately when you see it, Shoji White doesn't really seem to be a true grayish color because it does possess a bit more of that creamy beige aspect than we're used to seeing. But it does have a touch of gray in it, which is an important thing to remember. We talk a lot about different colors on the paint people, and we've been getting quite a few requests for neutral colors because of how often they tend to be used nowadays. I talk about this a lot, but when you have a neutral that is loosely classified as grayish or gray beige, it usually means it has gray and it has beige. When this combination is actually made up of gray and yellow, what can sometimes happen is a subtle green color cast can emerge in cooler or bluer lighting conditions. This can happen more apparently in other colors, but with Shoji White, the sort of effect is actually quite small and not especially noticeable. This is because of all the lighter grayish colors, Shoji White really does feel more like a beige dominant color, which keeps it feeling bright and comfortable. It also has an LRV of 74, which is the light reflectance value, and that puts it in that light color category, which has become pretty popular amongst people looking to open up their homes and have them feel more free and airy. Some fun color pairings that I might consider looking at are a touch more complementary in nature. Complementary colors tend to create a dynamic pairing of color hues that are opposite one another on the color wheel. The good news is here, however, when you're looking for a complementary color of a neutral color, the other color is going to end up feeling fairly neutral itself. While technically maybe a little more appropriate to go with a straight up blue or even an indigo, I find it nice to incorporate a sage gray green like Oyster Bay to complement Shoji White. Not only do you have warm and cool tones mingling, but you also have that touch of green in Oyster Bay, which not only works alongside that super subtle green shift in Shoji White, but it can also minimize the impact of that green and make it feel closer to a true beige color. For the areas that you want more of a brighter look nearby, you could easily go for a color like Greek Villa, which ends up being a full 10 LRV points lighter. And I can see a little bit less of that earthy beige quality that Shoji White has, mainly because Greek Villa is bringing that yellow undertone rather than cream. Moving along towards the trim color choices, speaking of Greek Villa, it would technically be a possible contender because of that 10 LRV contrast between the two, but I really think that those two just tend to work better as pairing colors in general outside of trim and wall. I actually prefer the creamier warm white found in Whitetail, mainly because it has less opportunity to feel gray in the slightest. It's just warm and it has that taupe touch to it, which I really enjoy. And it works quite nicely with Shoji White while being something other than a high reflective white. For something a bit less creamy and something that'll read a little more of a stark white, I usually default to pure white because of its hint of taupe to soften it while still being pretty light. I find myself recommending pure white more and more as the go-to trim color for those slightly warmer leaning neutral color palettes, while extra white is usually a better choice for cooler ones. Now where would I suggest you use Shoji White? Does it get the prestigious main color designation? Would you be able to use it throughout an entire home? I mean you could, but I wouldn't necessarily do that myself. All things considered, Shoji White is beige which for a lot of people is synonymous with boring. I think the color is great, but you can quickly overwhelm a space in monotony when you default to this color throughout. I like to implement colors like Shoji White in a first floor living area, for example, where perhaps its surroundings might be slightly darker, which could create an interesting dynamic. 
Imagine walking into a front foyer that's perhaps a little more contemporary and gray, then all of a sudden you end up in the living area where you're probably going to be chilling and spending more of your time, and it's light, creamy, and airy. It's going to create a very comfortable atmosphere that will draw people to that zone. I would almost use it as a bit of a reverse accent color. It's so neutral and subtle that people will be drawn to it. I don't know. You think I'm crazy? Well, maybe I am, but I promise you I'm only crazy about color. Agreeable Gray is one of the best selling colors by Sherwin Williams, and it's right here. It's definitely a bit darker than this one, but it's perhaps the one you're looking at if you want more of a really nice neutral mid-tone color. Okay, bye.